Hello, I'm Brad Wolf, and this is Dire Den, where we talk about all things tabletop RPG. And let's talk about April, because April was crazy. Yes, that type of crazy, and that type of crazy. The month started with Wizards of the Coast Creator Summit. Content creators visited WotC and saw the new virtual tabletop software game. Let's just call it what it is. It's a game. That summit didn't go as well as WotC wanted. Creators demanded real answers about the open game license debacle, while WotC had technical issues with their virtual audience. But by most reports, WotC did their best to make everyone happy by the end, but it led to more bad press for WotC in a year that didn't start well at all. The next April event was the D&D Direct live stream which showed us Watsi's plans for the next year. A lot of folks were disappointed by it because it focused mostly on brand recognition products and merchandise. They also told us that the new 2024 edition of Dungeons and Dragons was not gonna get a new name. It's just going to be Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. Even though you'll buy new books, they don't wanna call it a new edition. This also confused and frustrated people. So Wizards of the Coast continues to be unimpressive. Meanwhile, Cobalt Press announces the name of its Black Flag project, Tales of the Valiant. So D&D's newest competitor has an official name. And up until now, Cobalt Press was one of 5th edition's biggest supporters by making really great products for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. However, now they've become a new competitor. But Tales of the Valiant didn't hold the newest competitor title for very long. A few days later, Darrington Press from Critical Role announced not one, but two new role-playing games, Illuminated Worlds and Dagger Hearts. So now Critical Role, the people who make D&D's most popular live stream, are releasing their own game. I presume this means the next streaming session of Critical Role, they won't be playing Dungeons and Dragons, but will instead play their own game, Daggerheart. But wait, April wasn't over yet. Paizo announced that Pathfinder 2 will be getting their own rules update called Pathfinder 2 Remastered. As most of you know, Pathfinder and Pathfinder 2 have been D&D's biggest competition for the past 14 years. And Pathfinder 2 was built on D&D's open game license. But after the events in January of this year, Paizo divorced itself from D&D OGL and released their own license, the ORC. This new remastered version of Pathfinder 2 will completely scrub the game from anything connected to the D&D OGL and will be built on the ORC license. Meanwhile, Dungeons & Dragons is still going to be called 5e. Not 1D&D or 5.5 or 6th edition, it's just going to be called 5e. So I wonder how Paizo fans are going to feel buying new books called Pathfinder Remastered versus Dungeons & Dragons fans buying D&D 5e for a second time. Hey Wizards, is this good marketing? I guess we'll find out. So the month really wasn't looking good for WotC. But wait, <laughs> April wasn't over yet. There was one more thing that happened in April. Wizards of the Coast found out a Magic of the Gathering YouTuber released an unboxing video of Magic cards that were not supposed to be released yet. And they sent the private security firm with the worst reputation in history to get those cards back, the Pinkertons. Now, if you've never heard of the Pinkertons, you can Google them or play Red Dead Redemption 2. But they are basically the people you hire when you really want to intimidate someone. Obviously, a lot of people were upset by this as they perceived it as Watsi extremely overreacting. So April not only brought one disappointing story after another from Wizards of the Coast, it gave D&D new competition after new competition. 
So what does this mean? People continue to be unimpressed with Watsi, and we now have all of the following competition. Level Up Advanced 5e is already available. So is Shadow of the Demon Lord, a dark fantasy version of D&D. Both of these Dungeons & Dragons alternative are already on the market and you can buy them today. 13th Age is another high fantasy D20 system that's already available, but they also announced that they are doing a second edition. So they are re-entering the ring as another contender to Dungeons & Dragons. Pathfinder Remaster is coming out in November of this year, and we'll see if Paizo can hold on to that number two spot in the role-playing game community. Next, we go from the most crunchy rule system in Pathfinder to the most rules-light version of Dungeons & Dragons, Shadow Dark, that just made over a million dollars on Kickstarter and will be sent out to those backers soon. And again, we have Cobalt Press and their Tales of the Valiant. And there was a lot of excitement when Cobalt Press first announced their Black Flag project. But some of that momentum seems to have waned as their playtests show that it's really not that different than 5th edition. So it may be that Tales of the Valiant becomes the version you go to if you just don't like Watsi, but you still want to be playing the same game. The next game on the list is the one that I'm most excited for, and that's Shadow of the Weird Wizard. It's essentially a sequel to Shadow of the Demon Lord. However, the Weird Wizard version moves the game away from the overtly grim dark tone that Demon Lord had. This is the one that I will most likely switch to for my home games, but we'll have to wait and see. There's going to be so many options to choose from. Next is the game that I think is most likely to unseat Pathfinder as that number two contender, and that's Critical Role's Daggerheart. Critical Role has a huge fan base. So even if just half of their fans switch from Dungeons & Dragons to Daggerheart, that's going to be a huge shift in the role-playing game community. Daggerheart will premiere at this year's Gen Con and will release next year. So it seems likely all of these games could be on the market before the new version of Dungeons & Dragons will be available. And this doesn't include Matt Colville's new game, from MCDM. That's nine potentially serious competitors to D&D. For those of you old enough to remember VHS and Betamax or HD DVD versus Blu-ray, those battles there could be only one. But we know from console wars, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo, there could be as many as three. The next two years will be extremely interesting as we find out which two or three of these high fantasy d20 tabletop role-playing games will be the champ. What do you think? Who will rise to the top of the fantasy genre for TTRPGs? Will it still be Dungeons & Dragons? Will Daggerheart take that top spot? Will Paizo be able to stay one of the top three? We'll have to wait and see. But here's hoping that May brings us more interesting and exciting tabletop RPG news and fewer Watsi debacles. I'm excited to hear your thoughts in the comments below on all these games and any of the other games that I didn't include here. Most of all, I'm hopeful that the TTRPG community is going to have a ton of great options to play over the next two years and no one is going to be beholden to Wizards of the Coast. Thanks again for listening. This is Dire Dan and thanks for being a part of the community.